a very dear friend. Mark Stevens saved my ass, saved my life, literally. He's, uh, he was, he was from another planet. The Earth's atmosphere was just too rare for Mark, really. He was, he was the most, what, adventuresome, adventuresome man, soul, person. I think I ever met, perhaps to his detriment, but, but his, his compassion and his sense of love for everyone, and I mean everyone, I mean people who, who did terrible things to Mark. He would never, he never had a bad word to say about anyone, or maybe a, a jibe here and there. but. Not seriously, seriously. He was, he was a good soul, he really was. When I first met Mark, I went up to his apartment to take some books over to him that um, Harry had given me, and he introduced me to Herman, his boa constrictor. And Herman was a very lovely little snake. Herman crawled up my arm and around my neck and slithered down my blouse and tickled my tits and had a wonderful time. And I just had a good time with him. When we got to the set and started shooting, Mark showed up for his scene with Herman the Boa. He didn't want to leave him alone in the apartment over the weekend. Even though he didn't need to eat, because they only eat about once every two weeks, he gets lonely. And I understand that. So I'm sitting there on the bed playing with Herman, and Jerry walks by, and I swear he clasps his breast and says, Be still, my heart. I said, Well, if you call picking up a snake a handling a snake, I, I wouldn't want to get in an argument with it, you understand. And he said, would you do a scene with it? And I said, what kind of a scene? He said, a scene, you know, a scene. Whatever you can do with a snake, would you do it? I said, well, whatever Herman's willing to do is fine with me. We'll be, I'll, I'll be glad to. And thus evolved the, uh, the snake scene on the remake um, of Devil, when I did the little cameo role as the uh, washroom lady and all. I, met uh, Savannah in the makeup room, and she says, can I ask you a question? I said, what? She says, how did you get the snake in your pussy? I said, what? She said, well, PT told me to get this role. I'd have to do a snake, and I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> I said, well, I hate to disillusion both of you, but uh, Herman's the snake. His name was Herman. We had a purely platonic relationship, really. I, d I did let uh, him stick his head in my mouth, which snakes will do, because of course that's small dark holes is where they find prey. They're very willing to stick their nose in and see what they can find. So if you hold your mouth open and hold your breath, a snake, if its head is close, will stick its head in your mouth. And if you exhale, naturally it'll pull back, even if you don't have bad breath. And that's how the snake scene was done. Then I saw the snake scene in the new version of the film. My God, perils of Pauline. They bury that girl in these huge pythons. I, it's a wonder she didn't have a heart attack. You know, I, I, I really, I just, I nearly had a heart attack watching it. Uh, but that, the whole snake scene came about because of Herman the snake being just a very sweet snake. How did I prepare as an actress and as a woman for the escalating decadence of Miss Jones's character? I color-coded my fingernails and eyeshadow. I started off with a pale pink, with just natural for <clears throat> her first um, scenes of self-pity and getting to hell and all of that. And then, and then when she meets the teacher, I went for a light pink. And then I gradually went from, you know, pink to darker red, to fire engine, to mauve, to uh, green, to black for the last scene. Uh, and because, of course, things were not shot in sequence. So this way, I knew uh, what level of decadence, <laughs> depravity, degeneration. 
uh, I was supposed to be uh, playing by what color my nails were. <laughs> Get in the middle of the scene, I'd say, where am I? Oh yeah, green. <laughs> now you know all the tricks of the trade. Uh, I never performed sex and stage shows. And I know Mark Stevens tried to get me to do a, a couple of things with him one time. And I said, I can't do it, Mark. Now, I don't know why there is an intimacy about the camera that makes it OK that is lacking in, um, in a stage situation or a party situation, something like that. Um, when you're doing a film, there's a reality that exists in that little bubble in front of the camera. And I suppose if they were filming me doing a sex show on stage, I could do it. But the, but the fact is that getting up on a stage or in front of people at a party or something and performing sex for the pure, just to perform sex, just to say, you know, like perhaps they had Perhaps, perhaps they missed uh, Sex Education 101 or something, and people needed to know how to do it. I, I you know, I, but for whatever, I have never been able to handle that. Did I think that the good reviews that I got for Devil and Miss Jones and the indeed almost phenomenal success of the thing in its genre would lead to a film career in Hollywood? No, I never, did, I never had that delusion for a minute, um, particularly at that time. There have been crossovers since, but at that time I, I, I didn't expect. But then I had not, I had given up on myself as an actress before Devil and Miss Jones came along. I had done the auditions, I had gone, you know, the route, and done the rounds, sent out the pictures. I'd done quite a few commercials. Um, if it was going to be, it would have been, was my thinking. By the time I was 35 years old, 36 years old, and I was doing other things. I was into production and, uh, as I say, just trying to make a living. I, I had no, no eyes for Hollywood anymore at that point. I didn't think. But then, of course, after the film and the hubbleboo and all of this, and then when I got a call to come in uh, on Police Academy, oh, it all came back. It all came back. Every insecurity, every uh, titillation, uh, every up and down, simultaneous panic and delight that goes along with that, for me, that went along with that idea of being an actress was right back there, just full, like, like getting a, like, recurring case of herpes you know it was like full-fledged it broke out i was i was hooked again and then i very quickly did a couple of agent calls did a couple of rounds did a couple of submissions and realized not gonna happen not gonna happen forget about it and the sense of relief i felt when that finally hit me that eh, if you coulda you woulda and that's show business baby now what do you want to do with your life was wonderful and I have had it was like night and day my life has been so thoroughly pleasant since I didn't give a shit anymore <laughs> about whether I became a Hollywood star or not that I I just wish I had had that realization a little bit earlier. I know, you know, it's something that takes a while to, it has to cook in a certain amount of time until it happens. But it's been a wonderful, wonderful feeling to enjoy.